Now, Russia has sent a team of experts to Turkey to help with the investigation into the assassination of its ambassador. The body of Andrei Karlov was flown back to Moscow on Tuesday. Both Turkey and Russia have called the attack an act of terrorism meant to disrupt the relationship between the two countries. Well, I'm joined now by our correspondent, Andrew Hopkins, who's been following developments from Ankara. Andrew, what are the latest lines coming out on this investigation? Well, the Turkish government is really uh, squarely putting the blame for this assassination at the door of FETO, the, the Gulenist network that has also been blamed for the failed coup attempt of July the 15th. The Turkish foreign minister, he's been on the phone to his American counterpart in the US to explain what information they have about this. And this is all likely to be adding to the case that Turkey is continually putting together to try and get the extradition of the leader of the Gulenist network, Fethullah Gulen, from the United States in the near future. Now, there is a, some documents that are circulating in the Turkish media this morning, uh, which we understand are part of that case surrounding this assassination. Uh, and what these documents are saying is that the, the assassin, um, Altintash, he was given two days leave actually directly after the failed coup attempt on between uh, July the 16th and July the 18th, uh, when all uh, leave was banned for government employees. And this leave was granted by a police commissioner um, who is currently in jail, who's uh, facing allegations that he himself is a member of the, the Gulenist network. But relations between the United States and Turkey still not really on a completely even keel over this issue because we're also having comments from the US State Department asking Turkey to tone down some of the comments surrounding this case that are coming from this country. There's talk of conspiracy theories and that the US somehow was involved in the assassination or knew about it, but the US is saying this is, this is all ludicrous and that the investigation should be allowed to take its course. And Andrew, what's the government's response been? Uh, well, we know that tomorrow there's going to be a meeting between the Turkish president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, um, and the head of the intelligence service, the MIT, a man called Hakan uh, Fidan. They're, they're going to be talking about the issues surrounding the assassination and what can be done in future. But this man, Hakan Fidan, he's had quite a difficult year. He's been in charge while uh, the Ankara bombings took place and while the uh, failed coup attempt in July happened as well. And there have been various reports at different times that he was going to uh, lose his job over what's been happening in Turkey, but he's still in position and he's got another, yet another crisis to deal with. Um, here in Ankara, the security is still pretty high and it has been for most of the year since those bombings took place even before the coup and entrances in and out of the city are still being monitored. So security is still high. But one other thing to mention, the the U.S. Embassy, which is quite close to where the assassination took place, across the road from the modern art centre here in Ankara, that's due to reopen, we understand, uh, later today. OK, Andrew, for now, uh, in Ankara, thank you.